Uh, continuing with uh, page 2000, uh, exam 2009, so we're on question 12. And when we we discussed question 12, part A before. Now, question 12B is about punching through a shape. Now, we haven't discussed this yet in uh, the preliminary. This is something we discuss in the uh, at the start of next uh, of the year 12 test. So uh, it's important, but we haven't covered it yet, or at least for the people listening to this in 2018. 2019 could be a different story. I will tell you whether or not uh, it is the case. Okay. Describe hardening and tempering uh, heat treatment for a mobile blade. Okay, so describe usually is worth two marks. In this case, it's worth three, I guess, because I've got the extra step. So describe, identify is usually one mark, or two, depending on how many items you're identifying, but identify is just naming things. Describing is where you say the characteristics of the thing, explain, cause and effect, analyze or evaluate. Evaluate, you're giving reasons and making a judgment and make a conclusion that you say at the end why it's worthwhile. Analyze, why do I care? Okay, so we're going with a describe question, which means we have to talk about the features of something. Okay, uh, describe, if you can draw a picture, is often good too. Okay, so hardening, how do we harden? Well, okay, I'm going to give you a clue. So there's three main processes that we care about. I use the, the James Bond iterations, but also I like the avatar elements. So we've got fire, air, and water. Which one is quenching? Uh, water okay so we're going to harden with quenching now it says hardening there are other ways that we can harden right we can harden with flame hardening we can harden with carb by um through precipitation hardening or um age hardening but we're going to focus on the three that we've talked about in which case hardening is quenching so we quench by what do we how do we quench we heat up to its red hot which is 100 percent do 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 austenite which is a face center cubic you put it into oil or brine. Why not water? Because water evaporates. It's got a lower bo bo boiling point. It, so that changes the structure from face centered cubic, and it doesn't get to go to be body centered cubic. Instead, it becomes a body centered tetragonal. Um, now, what does it? What microstructure does it produce? It starts with an M. Martensite. Martensite is described as a cicular or needle-like. Yeah. So how do you draw it? You draw a circle. You just draw a whole bunch of lines. Okay. Now the problem is that martensite is no good. Martensite is very, very strong, very, very hard, which is say for a sword, for instance, we want it very, very hard, we want it very, very strong. The problem is as soon as it hits another sword or a shield, it shatters. So that's no good. So what do we do? We, starts with a T, temper it. So this is where I'd play the, the Sweet Disposition or a Love That Was Lost song. And um, we heat it up. Now, what temperature we heat it up to and for how long depends on the carbon content. We, we never heat it up past the uh, into the Austenar range. It's always less than red hot. And we heat it up for a bit and we release some of that stress. But if we draw the microstructure, it still looks like martensite. Yeah, it's, it's just tempered martensite, but it's still a cicular. We draw the same mi microstructure. Okay, so if I had to write this for three marks, I would say heat to red hot, brackets 100% gamma steel, quench in oil, um, then reheat to a lower temperature for a period of time to release stress. That's what I would write for three marks. Yep. Now maybe there's something more that I could say, but I think for three marks, I've got. I, I want to see the word quench. I want to see the word maybe red hot or austenite or gamma steel. I want to see the word um, uh, heat reheat for tempering. And maybe if you talk about martensite or acicula, that's that's good as well, right? Okay. Explain why special preparation is required when welding more than 0.6 carbon, 0.6% carbon steel. What's the, what's the problem if we're heal, uh, welding high carbon steel? Martensite, that's exactly right. Yeah, we can produce martensite, and martensite's only good if we temper it. So if we weld stuff that has high steel carb content, like stainless steels, we need to use TIG welding, right? So TIG welding, we can be far more accurate with our welds, and we can be more precise. Okay. So that's an explain. Now I said explain is often three, so we need to say cause and effect. So we say when high carbon steel is heated to high temperatures and cooled quickly, martensite forms. Martensite is not a desirable material, so we must be careful to, to ensure that martensite is not uh, produced. Okay, question 12. Now they want us to draw an isometric drawing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause and then I'm going to draw it up on the board and we'll maybe go from there. Now, 
For people looking at the test in 2018, I am not doing threaded sections, so you can ignore that. Um, and I'll go through standard sort of drawings that I'm going to ask for. If they ask for a dimension, show your drawing and an overall dimension and radius. Okay, so I didn't do that when I did my recording just a second ago, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, okay, so question 13. Disc brakes have replaced drum brakes. This is a good question. Explain the case why disc brakes replace drum brakes, giving two significant advantages over drum brakes and disc brakes. Now, this is two marks for an explain question. So we need a cause and effect. What's an advantage of disc brakes? What's the, remember, explain is cause and effect. Better stopping power because of, okay. So we needed, we can say we needed uh, better stopping because of faster cars. That's good. And because they'd have better heat dissipation, they're less subjected to warping. Yep, something like that. Yep. That would be the sort of thing. I think that's a pretty hard question. For me, I would be happy with one question to say, disc brakes allow better stopping because they have better heat dissipation. I'd be happy with that. But I needed to extend this to two significant advantages. Um, there's also worth noting that disc brakes used to be more expensive. Now they're on par, right? So that's a factor. So for disc brakes, when we go for um, really heavy vehicles, like semi-trailers and that sort of stuff, they still use drum brakes. Because when you're dealing with huge tonnages, it's more important. Okay. The diagram shows a booster assembly used for disc brakes. Explain why disc brakes need uh, power assist uh, need to be power assisted when drum brakes don't. What's the key word here that drum brakes have? It starts with an S. Servo assist. Servo assist exactly right. So the nature of drum brakes is that when they when you stop when you press the pedal, they just get wedged in place, right? so that they, they don't need the additional uh, stopping power. Whereas on the other hand, with disc brakes, because they're calipers that are catching the rotor or the disc, um, what we need is we need some sort of increase in power. How do we get the increase in power? Well, it's two things we do. One thing is we have the... Yeah, the vacuum. We have a, a vacuum-powered booster, and we also have the advantage of the master cylinder in the hydraulic fluid. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so... Discuss the advantage of hydraulic braking compared to mechanical braking systems. Okay. Well, we just talked about one. What's what's an advantage? So discuss. Well, I would just say we want two sentences. I, I discuss is is a bit of a funny uh, keyword. I never use the word discuss. So what's um? Yep. Okay, so we can get an increase of power due to Pascal's principle. Yeah, okay, excellent. What else? It's more reliable, less likely to break. Yeah, so that there's um, that, that's the main advantage. Yeah, more reliable, less likely to break. But we could also talk about power, power advantages. What about break by wire? Yeah, what's the advantages? more reliable than hydraulics yeah it's it's far we can have fail safe so we can have more redundancy so if, if a brake fluid gets cut right you're in real trouble your brakes your brakes will fail whereas with a brake by wire we can have two independent systems so if one breaks the other one still works but the problem is it's not very popular with the public at least in 2018 it's not very popular it's uh but we can get far more accuracy we can get better stopping times uh, so better stopping power, um, it's, more, it's lighter and more reliable. Okay, so hydraulic master cylinder. Okay, so this is a Pascal principle question. So what's the difference in the diameter? What's the diameter ratio? What's the diameter ratio? Yeah, we'll I'll go with 45 to 25, yeah? Okay, which is 1.8. So what is its area ratio? 3.2, good. Okay, so what's its velocity ratio? 3.24, yeah, excellent. Okay, so um, if the force of 300 newtons is applied to the master cylinder, what will be the force on the wheel cylinders? Okay, so the master cylinder is smaller, so big force, big area. This is small area, small force. So this one's gonna be bigger. It's gonna be 300 times that number. Nine, yeah, right, 972. Okay, 
So that's how I appreciate Now, you've also got to keep in mind things like efficiency. The mechanical advantage, if I said it was 85% efficient, I'd then multiply by 0.85. Wait, if I said it was... My, uh, yeah, so if it was efficient. Now, that's important to remember if the efficiency is on the input or the output. Think about it. Always stop and think about in this question, do I need, if it's less efficient, do I need to put in more energy or am I going to get out less energy? Yes, yeah, so that's really important when you're talking about efficiency questions. You can always write out the formula, all right? Efficiency equals mechanical advantage over velocity ratio, and then sh things should work. Okay, this next question, question E, so I think we're in question 12E. Um, we are not doing friction questions at an angle. We're only doing friction questions that are flat. So the formula is F equals mu N. This question here, where the friction is at an angle, I don't do until uh, second semester, so the start of like February of next year. Okay, cast iron. Now, I will probably have a cast iron question in, in the exam, but I probably won't talk about specifics like malleable cast iron, grey cast iron, ferritic cast iron. I just tend not to go into it. Why? Because you don't sit in the HSC very much. The question I'd be more inclined to ask you is, what is a common um, additive added to cast iron? Or silicon, okay, is the answer I was looking for there. Okay, great. Or I might say, why, um, explain how cast iron, we can produce cast iron with large amounts of graphite and what is the benefit? So, so yeah, okay, so we get graphite by the more silicon we have in, the more graphite we produce. The advantage of having graphite flakes is machinability and vibration dampening. Excellent. Okay. So, biomedical ethics. Okay. Discuss one ethical issue related to the chosen area. Now, in Facebook, I listed something like six or seven, right? I talked about comparative cost of treatment. Uh, I've talked about uh, exploitive pra pra medical practices. So, for instance, EpiPens going from $100 to $600. Is that ethically sound? Well, it's a private company. They're allowed to do that. But when people's lives are at stake, we have to ask whether or not it's justifiable that the price is so high. We talked about things like testing on animals. We talked about use of nuclear technology. We've talked about... Uh, what are some other ethics? Okay, so things like community groups responding to disability. So, for instance, we watched um, we watched the thing, the video about my son is deaf. Yeah, okay. We watched that video so that the deaf community have um, their misgivings about the cochlear implants. We talked about uh, the testing on humans and whether or not we should be using things that don't work perfectly on humans, but there always has to be a first person. So we're now going to talk about materials used in uh, biomedical applications. So first of all is polyethylene. Why would we use polyethylene for the uh, cap? Uh, the reason why we'd use it, well, what's, what's the first reason? Durable, excellent, yeah. Bio biomedically inert, it doesn't react with us, right? So it doesn't get worn away, it's, it's not biodegradable. So it will last a long time in the human body without re negatively impacting on humans. And this is going to be true for all of the materials. But it also, when we want to make its shape, it can be injection molded into a very accurate shape. Yes, yeah, so that's really important. When we're dealing with humans, the dimensions need to be very, very exact. Okay, so any of those are good. It injected molded to precise shape, bi biomedically inert, uh, durability. Yep, yeah, okay. Why is pure titanium appropriate for the stem of a prosthesis? Okay, so a lot of those answers we just used, biomedically inert, durability are important, but what what is the other property? Why are we using titanium and not, say, stainless steel? What's the property of titanium? It starts with an L. Yeah, okay, so it's strong and light. What we call that is good specific strength, yeah? But it is also very, very um, uh, corrosion resistant and it's bi biomedically inert. Okay, what about ceramics? So again... Biomedically inert, durable, right? They're two things we can get away with. So why would we use that in the head of the prosthesis? Well, we need something that's going to be hard, something that's not going to wear away easily. Yeah, so that we that's a, that's a property of ceramics is that ceramics tend to be hard. So we and then we can say that any of the others we've already used strength strength properties. It needs to be strong. It needs to be tough. It needs to be uh, to be able to 
last a long time. Now, divide all of those uh, applications between the six marks that you've got there and you should be fine. Okay, this question here, you do see this occasionally, which is um, 